Good morning, everyone. We're back, finally, after all of this COVID and winter, so cold here, like we couldn't, I couldn't take it. Anyway, we're back, finally, hey. Um, we're gonna be working on the Panda, but today I want to actually bring to you one of my new projects. I really think you guys will be interested in this. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get to it. What I wanna build, Actually, and more than build is, uh, I'll reveal to you guys what I want to do, what I plan on doing. You guys let me know what you think. All right, so the plan here is, I've seen a lot of YouTube um, uh, channels that have a tutorial on how to build uh, cross carts, um, all various different vehicles. And so, and I always see them like, Kudos to them, you know, it's not really not easy to make a, tu a full tutorial on uh, how to make a cross cart. There are so many variables that you need to consider, especially in the suspension. It becomes really complicated to figure out where everything needs to be in relation to each other to get the right uh, characteristics in your suspension. Um, so cross carts made to go off-road. What I want to build is something that will be very capable of road, but will be able to um, we will be able to lower it and stiffen the suspension, and be able to just uh, take it on road and make it. I want to. Here's the thing: in suspension, there is no optimal. There is always a compromise, especially if you're trying to. Um, if your goal is to try and have the best world, uh, the best possible, you know, characteristics on pavement and off-road. So with that into consideration, I came up with this design, which I think is going to be way, way simpler than uh, a lot of other builds that are on uh, YouTube nowadays, because I always see them making jigs and uh, you know trying to measure things up properly and with this design we're gonna take all of that out of the equation um, so I'll just show you it's gonna be way simpler to explain um, we're gonna be viewing the design from the side and then from top down so I'm just gonna go ahead and design that so we're gonna have our lower frame rails are just going to be a straight pipe that goes from the very front of the engine to the very back. That's going to be basically our structural support. I've designed this to be, um, we're going to be using millimeters because we live in Europe and metric system. Uh, I'll probably put a little, uh, yeah, a little um, square at the bottom saying the measurements in uh, inches. Uh, so I've designed this to use a 38 Mil, uh, diameter, 38 mil diameter pipe uh, with a 3 uh, mil uh, thickness that goes across the whole section of the car from front to back. The genius of this comes in these plates here. There's going to be two plates, actually four plates, These four plates are going to be our end plate, well, front plate and back plate. And this is going to be where the suspension hooks up to. So this um, base plate, we're going to call it, because it's the same everywhere. Around, uh, like every single one of these is going to be exactly the same. So it's going to be making it uh, so simple that anybody with a grinder and a welder will be able to build this w without a problem. And it takes out of the equation all of the calculations that you have to do to 
get the suspension to work the way that you want it because I've actually designed this on the computer and uh, I'm going to take you on that uh, on the computer later. I'll show you how everything works and what we're actually, excuse me, uh, what I'm actually planning because there's actually so much to explain in this, in the suspension only. Um, you know, anti squat, anti dive, anti roll. Uh, you know, our caster angles, camber angles. So we're, this video is probably going to be done in more than one part. So today is going to be just the introduction. Then maybe we'll uh, section. You know, the suspension, the gearbox side, the engine side, um, and all that sort of stuff. So uh, today, well, I'll, I'll just introduce it to you. Stop yammering. So we got our four base plates. They all look the same. So I'm going to just draw. Um, what they look from the front. So this looks something like well you're just gonna have to excuse my drawing guys I I clearly am not um, an artist but you're gonna get the idea. So these are gonna be the holes where uh, our two frame rails are gonna be. Just gonna make it this way So that th these two frame rails here are going to fit right inside here and here. That's going to basically square up as you fit the pipe inside of the base plate. It'll square it up. The only thing you need to make the be careful of, you know, is that it's 90 degrees between the pipe and the face of the plate. And once that's achieved, everything will square up by itself. The cool thing about this base plate is that it incorporates a whole set of holes here where the suspension is going to bolt onto. So the reason why I put all of these holes is so that you can have the adjustability of putting this arm anywhere. So that you can get more <coughs> more anti-squat, uh, sorry, more uh, anti-roll characteristics if you decide so. You can chase optimal or zero bump steer by changing the distance between these two A-arms. You can change how much gamber, camber gain you achieve by um, lifting or lowering the car which will come in handy when we want to go from off-road mode to on-road mode. So when we lower it, we just move these um, a little bit further down and we'll, uh, it'll let, uh, let us achieve that lower um, ride height without, um, <coughs> without giving us uh, bump steer, which is something that I really wanted to incorporate in this design so that you could chase that perfect balance between uh, <coughs> your bump steer and your suspension height. So because of that, <coughs> this is basically going to be the most adjustable suspension at least I have ever seen on a cross cart because it'll allow you, you know, to put it basically anywhere on this, you know, maybe we're not going to need these these holes here, but it's going to be nice, you know, it doesn't cost us anything to, you know, just get them uh, laser, laser cut. Uh, other thing is that I'm trying to make this as simple as possible so that anyone can go and uh, take my design, modify it the way they want, say that you want, uh, you know, 2 inch tubing instead of uh, 38 millimeter like I have in my design. That's easy to do, you just go into the, this, the only thing you need to change is that that uh, diameter right there. Uh, moving on, here and here is where our second set of uh, rails are going to be fitted to and welded. So they're going to be here. But they're not going to go all the way across. <clears throat> or rather, they will be going all the way across, 
but it's not going to be a, a straight line. You can see how this is quite narrow. I've designed it to be, I think, under 300 millimeters wide. So that gives us the ability to have very long arms, very long A arms. And the longer your A arm, the more you, uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can have suspension travel. And that's going to be great for when we go in off-road. So we want to keep this as narrow as possible, but uh, big enough so that we can fit everything that goes in, in here to actually make the, the cross character run. So we have the two frame rails. These rails here are actually going to be, I'm going to do the top, uh, top down view now. So we have, That's something how it's going to look a bit exaggerated at this point so that I can make you understand um, you know how the suspension is working but basically these two are our two frame la rails one and two these two these four are our top rails that uh, basically stiffen up the suspension side of things and yeah, as you can see here ideally you'd want a tube bender and just bend that tube up so that you can achieve this angle but you can always uh, just notch that and that and just make a straight cut there so that even if you don't have Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, even if you don't have a tube bender, you can still achieve this. Really simple, you know. Everything is straight except for these three that you'll need. You'll need to notch. And uh, these that you see, like uh, width-wise, are going to be our second set of plates. That's going to be the base of where the driver and passenger are going to be seated. Um, so yeah, I'm designing this so it's going to be two-seater. I just think two-seaters are way f more fun, you know, like what's the point of not being able to scare your friends <laughs> if you have a cross cart? So, I think with that, we've uh, explained... Um, <clears throat> we've explained that the simplicity of this... Uh, um, this setup, you know, basically all you need is, um, you know, two long thick pipes and, I don't know, maybe three or four meters of uh, thinner, thinner tubing. You just arrange it in there, make sure that the base plate and the uh, two bottom rails are squared 90 degrees. And you're golden, you're not going to need any... Uh, any jig, you're not going to need like a, a flat welding table as long as those two criteria are met that should just go together really really easy um, there actually are a, a few other plates that you're gonna need there's a plate that goes actually two one on this side one on the other side so one here and one here then one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. But these actually weld in from the side, so you don't have to worry about fitting everything together and then welding it. You can just weld this frame up like that and then weld these side support. Basically, it's just so that the, um, the A-arm can go and bolt in between here. You know, so the arm will come out like this. The bottom may arm a little bit bigger. And then connect it there at the knuckle. So yeah, that's where the um, all the suspension will bolt in. Because it's uh, going to be cut, laser cut, preferably, but you know, you can plasma cut it too. It'll, uh, you know, it'll, you'll achieve the same. 
Um, so the, um, and these plates here look something a bit like this, but just uh, cut like this. So this section here. And it just goes onto the side. You bolt in your uh, your heim joint, one, two, and then you weld across this section here and this section here. And you got yourself all the mounting points for the suspension of the frame figured out and done. You don't have to calculate anything that's uh, already been done in my uh, my design and uh, yeah it's uh, you know I think it's gonna make it so much simpler to actually build this thing because the only thing you need is actually go to a, a fabrication shop or a metal shop or anything that has a um, <coughs> laser cutter you go there you give them three plates to cut it's four plates of the base plate, then it's uh, eight of these smaller ones, and two, which is these ones, which look something like this, looks something like that, where this is where your main frame rails are going to pass, and here, and here is where your upper, these rails are going to pass right here. So that it gives you a reference point of where the rails are supposed to be, so that you can get everything nice and centered. You know, you're not going to have a corner coming out further this way or further in, it, because you need to go through this point, which is fixed in uh, in space by this plate. So as I said, two of these plates, four of these plates, and eight of these plates. Some piping, and you got yourself a frame. The cool thing is that you can make this frame as long or as short as you want, depending on how you want to arrange your system. It'll it'll allow you to do anything you want. You know, if you want to have an open, um, <coughs> you know, an open cross cut without the the hoop on top, you can do that. No worries. You want to have it rear wheel drive with a rear mounted engine you can do that you want to do four wheel drive because I've uh, designed this so that you can actually put these apart as much as you want we'll give you the space to put a differential either on the back or on the front you want to do uh, front engine design you can do that just extend the frame as, as much as you need so that you can fit the engine and your feet <coughs> and you're golden so <coughs> what I want to do is uh, is gonna be four-wheel drive front engine design we're gonna be using something like a, a motorcycle engine you know something uh, I don't <laughs> I'm not really looking for a, a, you know, a four-cylinder Japanese bike because it's not really perfect for off-roading. You the engine revs, and you know, 14, 15,000 RPM, and we're gonna need a little bit more torque uh, down low, you know, to actually be four-wheel driving. Uh, but it's gonna it's gonna be nice to have that top end when we're on road. So I think we're going to be settling for something a bit in the middle ground. We're not going to go for a four cylinder, but we're not also going to be going for a, you know, a big thousand cc two cylinder, you know, like a BMW or something like that. So I was thinking uh Triumph Speed Triple. It's a it's a good middle ground. It's it still has a lot of top end, but you have that middle, you know, uh grunty you know, you just have those bigger cylinders that will give you more torque down low. So that's what probably we're going to be looking for. It would be nice to have also uh, something like a Honda ST 1300 engine. That I think that would look 
awesome, as in because that is a V4 um, longitudinally mounted in the bike, and it has a, a drive shaft, not a not a chain, not a chain driven bike. So that would look awesome having two, um, you know, two two uh, a bank on one side and a bank on the other. Uh, Basically like a little V8 chopped in half and then chucked in a, a little small frame. I think this could be really, really interesting. The cool thing about all of this suspension geometry that we are going to be able to um, um, test out so many different um, aspects of, uh, of this setup, because it gives us all of these uh, different arrangements, and uh, oh, mm, <coughs> that's not even all of them. That's all only on the frame. We're gonna have a uh, a ladder set up on the top of the A arm with a lot of holes, so that we can put uh, the shock or actually the push rod because I want to do what's it called? Um, I want to do cantilever suspension because that's gonna be able to give us. Uh, the right height adjustment that we want without going to uh, affect our preload and uh, our stiff our spring stiffness and the cantilever suspension is going to allow us also to stiffen and um, and soften the suspension without changing the right height uh, which is going to be critical in the situation where we want to have uh, the best of both worlds so yeah, to sum it up, really simple design on the frame, four-wheel drive, two differentials, bike engine in the middle, cantilever suspension for full adjustability, and I was thinking of putting a uh, Suzuki Satana or Suzuki SJ, um, there are a lot of other ways to call them, but uh, they're just a small four-wheel drive and you can probably get uh, the transfer box out of them really cheap. The cool thing is that they have a flange already mounted on the input of the transfer box. So it would be really, really easy to put uh, a chain, uh, sorry, not a chain, um, a sprocket on that going to the engine without having to deal with drive shafts and you know balancing the drive shaft and everything just make it really simple chain driven to the transfer box and from the transfer box to uh, drive shaft going to both differentials one in the front one in the back so uh, with the transfer box we'll be we'll have selectability to we're gonna have too high for high and for low. The Suzuki Satana transfer box has a, a reduction gear of 2.1 um, or of 2.6, I don't remember correctly right now, but it's it's not a lot for a, um, for a transfer box. Usually you'd go, uh, it'll, uh, the transfer box will reduce the gearing to you know, something around 4 or 3 to 1. But we're gonna stick with the two to one. It's gonna be a real light, um, a real light cross cart, and I think that uh, that's gonna be plenty for what we want to do. Cool thing. We're gonna have, uh, as I said, two uh, two wheel drive to the rear. That's gonna allow us to do some drifting. So uh, yeah, the suspension comes really into play when we want to go drifting because you know there's a lot to play with um, I'm not going to go into depth about all the caster angles and uh, camber angle and king ping inclination and, you know there's a lot that went into designing this I really hope you enjoy you know and you would enjoy watching me build this I'm uh, so keen in building it I just need some support from you guys <laughs> at the moment you know like I have so many projects that uh, it's just it's so complicated um, 
your support is so greatly um, so greatly appreciated even just liking co liking commenting subscribing it changes so much for a little channel like mine um, I really hope you enjoyed it I spent a lot of time on this I would love to hear your guys criticism if you didn't like it please tell me why I, I'm you know I'm open to new ideas if there's any way that we can make this even better and even simpler I will um, put up the plans for this on my uh, Patreon page so if you want to see all the development that went behind this and um, you know check out all the all the designs and everything you can do that on my Patreon for the moment once I've tested everything out and I'm sure that this is going to be a valuable you know a valid product and not that uh, it's just going to fail at the first uh, corner I'm actually going to be uh, making this public completely free um, I'm just gonna put the, uh, the design out there because I love seeing people design and uh, come up with different uh, different solutions to a problem and uh, I would love to see what you guys can accomplish with uh, with this uh, base design I would really I really think it's uh, you know it's easy to the point that anybody with a grinder and the welder can put this together. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm just repeating myself right now. But yeah, really important guys. Like, comment and subscribe. I really don't like saying it, but you know, it works. And the only way to grow is for you to just smash that button. <laughs> Without further ado guys, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.